All right, next letter. Um, we have A, initials A, B from Rochester, Indiana. Dear Brian, thank you for your willingness to serve the Lord. I get a lot out of your sermons. The main thing I learned was about 501c3, being raised in church and going to a Christian school and sending my kids to the same Christian school. I was floored by this. I hate to admit the first time I heard you say something about not going to church, I thought you were a nut. <laughs> I then uh, saw a video that sounded interesting, so I thought I would give you another chance. Plus, I thought about Proverbs 18, verse 13. He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So glad I did. Thank you for taking a stand. Speaking of taking a stand, this whole corona nonsense, all in capital letters, I agree, I refuse to close my business. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your stand. Local saw shop did the same thing. You know, I don't think the guy is saved or anything, but, you know, he's doing good. <laughs> now the Lord is, I believe, blessing us for it. We have had the best months ever. Awesome. See that? Yeah. Freedom here. This is a good letter. I enjoy this. Um, I agree with you about this leading up to the catching away. I will go as far as to say, if you willingly will put on the mask, you will take the mark. Again, amen. I also have trouble believing that a truly safe person would ever put on a mask, I guess, besides for their job. Yeah, I understand. Here's something that might make you uh, your eye twitch. I was married at First Baptist Church in Hammond, Indiana. <laughs> I, not really my eye twitch, it's more of a... Uh, uh, Jack Hiles' church. Okay, if you don't know. Thankfully, not by Jack Scapp. <laughs> yeah. As we had, as he had other weddings that day in the main church. By the way, we were married a day before you and your wife, um, the uh, May the 19th of 2012. That's rather interesting, because we were May the 20th, 2012. So that's really neat. <laughs> I say all of that to tell you, I had no idea about the evils of that church. The church I was going to was Liberty Baptist here in Rochester. My wife-to-be was going there. I realized that it's not a not really a good thing now, but we met on ChristianMingle.com. Hammond is roughly 100 miles from Rochester, so we only saw each other on weekends. So thankfully, I didn't see much of that church. I forgot for that to make sense. We uh, alternated weekends. Most of this was to say that my wife and I do not agree on what I would say are doctrinal issues. She is for easy believism, from Jack Hiles, and other things they taught her. So if you could keep her in your prayers, uh, her name is S. Can't give the name. I can't get her to watch your videos. I can understand why. <laughs> um, but, you know, stick with it, brother. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll eventually, uh, you know, Lord will give you chances to get through to her. Um, just pray, pray really hard. Just say, Lord, I want to show her the truth and, and Lord will give you that chance. Here's something you can use if you want about Jack Hiles. Raise your right hand and click your heels together and instead of saying Sig Hiles, say Jack Hiles. Um, it was one of the things he was saying. Jack Hiles did some of the weirdest stuff at his, his uh, you know, preacher boy conferences or whatever else, these conferences he would do for preachers. Uh, man, I mean, I've heard stories from people I, I've, again, a lot of you don't know that, but I've been in contact with people from Hiles Anderson, uh, graduates, you know, people that used to go to the church there, First Baptist Church. I, I've, I've heard some things I haven't brought out in video, so that doesn't surprise me. I don't. I know you don't have time to write back, but if you are able to answer a couple of questions in videos, I would appreciate it. Here we go. First, in Genesis 6, the sons of God, you said, are always angels, and I believe that. But what I don't understand is how did they procreate because Jesus says, in heaven we will be like the angels. Okay? Okay, well, let me answer your question there. Um, there's different theories there, whatever else. Um, but, you know, it says in the resurrection, they are as the angels of God. They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Messing the verse up a little bit there. But it's in heaven. It's in the resurrection. It's up there. Um, there's no need for marriage up there. Okay, nobody dies. So you don't really need to have new children born and whatever else to replace those that died or something. Um, <clears throat> but now, how did they get down here? How did they marry? 
Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. You get into some of the some of the occultic type of stuff and whatever else. Like they, I've heard a theory that um, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the angels would have to come and drink blood before they could have blood in their system. But that doesn't really work out because if you drink blood, it's just in your belly and then it goes out. It's not like it's going to get into your veins. So, um, you know, the Bible does talk about the angels that left their first estate. So however that happened, however it worked, I have no idea. But the whole point is, you go back to the Old Testament, sons of God, 100% of the time is always a reference to angels. You see that in the book of Job. The sons of God are gathered before God, before uh, the Lord in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, and Satan comes in with them. So they're reporting. It's kind of roll call. You know, they're all standing there. You know, they have to give an account and everything. That's the sons of God. They're there, you know, the morning stars. They're also called that, that, you know, when the world was being created, they're singing for joy and shouting for joy and things. Okay. Um, so sons of God in the Old Testament, they're not the sons of Seth or, you know, whatever else. I've gotten into big arguments with people on this thing. And it's not, a, it's not an issue I'm going to part company with, although people have parted company with me because I didn't agree with them. But, you know, to me, it's not a huge deal. Um, but in the New Testament, now are we the sons of God. Let me show you that. Let me just go to that verse real quickly here. Um, it's in 1 John. Um, it changes things, in other words. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, well, uh, start in verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. It doesn't say, beloved, we are the sons of God. It says, now. All right? Now are we the sons of God. So in the past, say people were not the sons of God. All right. Very important to understand the distinction there. So anybody that says, well, no, it's just sons of God are, are you know, saints all throughout the Bible. You're rejecting scripture. Now are we the sons of God. It changed Old Testament to New Testament. Right. It's very important to get that. So how did it work? I don't know. They left their first estate, which I would say would be heaven. My simple answer would be they left heaven, came down to the earth and said, OK, I'm done. I'm leaving the Lord up there and I'm going to go down. And they, they come in, you know, uh, under the daughters of men and they bear children. I would say probably when they left heaven, the ability for them to procreate, you know, was there. I'll show you another one. You say, well, that's back in the pre-flood world, right? Well, yeah, but there's a New Testament tie-in as well. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, For this calls out the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Okay, a woman is to have a male covering because of the angels. That's what it's talking about. Power on her head does not mean a little cloth covering or something. A woman goes like this and puts some little cloth thing on her head and now she's got power. Oh wait, no, it has to be this way. And then she's got power, you know, depending on which church you go to. <laughs> you know, if it's a bonnet on the back of the head or maybe like a little doily, then that's power for the brethren. Uh, the Amish get more of the thing and they pull their hair up like this and that's power for the Amish. And it, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with a physical covering. It's talking about a spiritual covering, a husband. So it's still there in the New Testament. Now, is it going on? No idea. Um, I think it's entirely possible, but it's certainly not a um, thing that's being done much if it is going on. So uh, it could just be something as simple as they're not able to marry um, because they're in heaven and they're, there's just male angels up there. There are no female angels. They leave their habitation up there in heaven. Now they can come down and they can give birth to women down there. Again, read Genesis chapter 6 compared to, to Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. Sons of God are angels. Okay, 
Second, Jesus turned the water into wine. I like to think that it was grape juice, as I know how people are that they would get um, drunk. So my thoughts are that would cause people to sin. Um, I know that my, okay, skip that for now, but the, the, the thing of the Jesus turning water into wine, no, I believe it was alcoholic wine. Um, but again, what you get into a big study on this whole thing, there are uh, sulfites that they put into wine, which is sort of a synthetic chemical type of a deal. I'm not really an expert on this whole thing, but truly real fermented wine is actually quite healthy for you. It's like sauerkraut is fermented cabbage. Um, yogurt is fermented milk. Kefir is fermented milk. Um, fermentation does not make something rotten. Okay, fermentation actually introduces helpful bacteria uh, that are there to make your gut area very healthy and it, it improves digestion, it improves your health, a lot of different things. So the wine that would have been made would have been fermented, but it was not going to be a very high alcohol content. So it would have been a, a very, um, depending on the grapes that are used and the process and whatever else, uh, wine can have a very nice taste to it. Um, but they, the commercial stuff that's out there, they make it so that you get drunk. And that was not the intention of true fermented wine. Um, so that's how I would answer that. Um, just trying to see here. Um, I know that my donation isn't much, but if you are able to find a new office, that would be an answer to prayer. Thanks again for all you do. Yours in Christ, A.B. Um, thank you for your donation. Thank you for your prayers very much. And the Lord did answer the prayer. I'm not going to say anything more right now. Um, probably by the time these videos are posted, uh, Lord willing, we'll have our new office. And the announcement will be come out shortly thereafter. So, But uh, really neat to hear from you. Very interesting. The, the two things I like the most about your letter. Uh, the thing of you got married uh, one day before us so that was great that was neat and the other thing there about you didn't close your business down and god blessed you for it that's great um, god will bless you for uh, not conforming to the world okay so great letter we'll go on to the next one